Working in downtown Toronto is a whole dream. It honestly feels like you're the main character of your very own movie. The bustling people, the chaotic city buses and ferry lights, coffee shops, and cute fancy outfits. But what a lot of people forget to mention about living the dream is that the dream starts with the unfortunate reality of waking up at 5.30 a.m. I wanted to show you a realistic morning work routine because I think sometimes people forget to mention the struggles of working a 9 to 5, especially settling into a first office job and how draining it is. You're a slave to your alarm clock and every morning is a lifeless tug of war. My morning commute takes about two hours, so I have to make sure I get up early enough to get ready before rushing to catch the train. Unfortunately, that's the reality for a lot of people who work in the city but live further away. Since our office is business casual, I like to find a cute comfy pair of pants, usually high-waisted because that's how I roll, and tuck a long sleeve top or sweater inside during this winter season. It's stylish and cozy, but also usually a pain using brain power that early in the morning to pick an outfit. I always pictured everyone dressing up and looking cute in a creative office job, so I like to put extra effort, and it honestly does make a difference for me. Next is jewelry, a necklace that I almost don't go anywhere without, and a bunch of mixing and matching of rings. It's like bedazzling and putting little belts on your fingers and it makes me so happy when I look down and they're all dressed up. It truly is the little things. Most often, 90% of the time, I'll take the time to do my everyday makeup routine, which usually takes around 10 to 15 minutes maybe 40 if it's a bad eyeliner day, which I actually do put on pretty much every day. I just love the way it looks and feels, especially with a red lip, classic. Having that quiet process of doing your makeup and then feeling like a million bucks right after creates that illusion that maybe you're not as sleepy as you think you are. And some days I believe it, but it is true. It does give the sense of waking up and feeling like a human being when you have your face on. The days when I don't, I do find myself feeling more sluggish and don't put enough effort into my outfit either and then just feel really sleepy throughout the day. There's a sort of psychological thing that happens I think that really switches that on button in your brain and gets you ready for the day ahead. My favorite part is adding the lipstick and highlighter and seeing the final product to finally feel almost alive. I do love a good red lip. I definitely feel like it helps me feel more fierce and confident and I think that's all makeup really is there for, to have fun and feel more like yourself. I'll usually prioritize my makeup and then just brush out my hair which I never end up having time to do anything with. Gathering everything I need for the day usually goes a little more chaotic. It's usually me racing around my room, running late, still looking for my earphones or losing my presto card, which let's not talk about how many times I've actually lost it. Shoulder bags like this are also really great to fit everything in, but sometimes weigh heavy on one shoulder, especially when fitting in a snack or lunch, so it is hard to carry sometimes, and one aspect I don't think enough people talk about. How do commuters carry all their stuff with them to work? It's one of those things that I was like, how does everyone do this so flawlessly? It's quite simple actually. Most people on the train have a laptop bag, a big bag like this, and a lunch bag with them. But the idea of lugging it all with me always seemed impossible. So I thought a simple and temporary solution would just be to splurge on buying lunch sometimes. You know me, an innate problem solver and all that. It takes me about half an hour to drive to the train station to catch the earlier train. Which don't get me started about the daily running to the train fiasco. No matter how early I drive to the train, which is never early enough, I always seem to be sprinting for my life to catch the train. It seems like time and space and all the elements just fighting against me. So when I was filming me running here, I wasn't just showing you, I'm legit racing to make it in real time. And literally 15 seconds later, the train closed its doors. I can write an entire novella about my train sagas. It truly is my daily cardio and anxiety kicking exercise that just doesn't quit. Once I get my heart to stop racing and my blood pressure back to normal, I find a window seat and stare out poetically to the window views. The scenic views are my favorite part of the ride. 
There's a certain the world slows down type of peace you get by just watching the hastening movement gliding past your very eyes, the same every day, yet changing within seasons and weather moods. One of the biggest positive things that's come out of having such a long commute is being forced to create this structure, routine, and habit of finding peace in the beginning of your day. I take this time to open up my Bible and read a couple chapters from my one year reading Bible plan. It's so nice to have this time to study, learn, and grow in the quiet. If I'm too sleepy to concentrate, I'll put on some worship and praise songs, most likely some Lauren Daigle. In the beginning of my 9 to 5, the commute was really challenging and I found myself sleeping on both the way there and back. But after a while, I really challenged myself to put that time to good use and not just use it for waste. So I would use that quiet time to read with Jesus or put on some music. Then I'd switch up my music to listen to a podcast or audiobook. That's how I listened to half of Michelle Obama's book, Becoming. Some days I'll find a Christian podcast episode to listen to or some inspirational, motivational, personal growth learning on either Pocket Casts, the podcast app, or Spotify. Some really great ones that I listen to throughout the year are Whoa That's Good from Sadie Robertson, Listen Honey with Jeannie Mai, and Unlocking Us with Brene Brown. Some days I won't feel like listening to them, so I'll give myself music breaks. But mostly my goal is to find ways to be productive during the times when I'm stuck driving or sitting or walking. It keeps my mind off things like the fact that if you live far from Toronto, the daily trip there and back is crazy expensive. I only have my Presto card to wipe my tears with, and that's not even counting an additional subway fare if it's too cold outside and I decide to take the underground pathway instead of walking in Antarctica out there, where the air slices your face and frosts your eyelashes. It is Canada after all. Walking in downtown Toronto feels like you're living in New York. The high skyscrapers, the colliding crowds, the bakeries and shops, the resemblance is truly too great. Having your earphones in and tuning the world out while taking in every second and observing people and just being a part of a lively city is honestly the greatest feeling. Sometimes I'll overhear the funniest conversations or be inspired by the way the city glistens in the rain or sparkles in the snow. Some days I'll even notice the same people walking alongside me or towards me at the exact same time every day alongside my walking route. I'll usually arrive in downtown Toronto at 8 o'clock, so I always have about an hour before 9 to just chill and take it slow. A whole hour completely just for me to just soak everything in and be lost in a trance. Usually I'll spend that time cozying up in a Starbucks back when, you know, we could actually do that. I take the time to journal, sip my coffee, or write up an Instagram post. And honestly, there's nothing better than just writing about the city while you're in it, with a window view of the CN Tower. The CN Tower, let me tell you, never gets old. The more I see it day by day, the more grander it looks. It's one of those things I never take for granted, because being in the city always immediately elevates my mood. And if I didn't have breakfast that morning, I'll almost always make my way towards a cute cafe for a pastry. Walking past here today, I actually walked by a crowd of cameras who were busy filming a movie. I later googled it and they really were filming some Disney movie that's coming to Disney Plus next year called Sneakerella, which is so cool! Getting coffee is a personality trait at this point. Walking inside a really fancy and aesthetic coffee shop makes me happy in ways I can't even explain. The rich espresso lingering smells, the bakery items, the baristas, it's always just so charming for me. And croissants are my weakness. Plus, I love splurging on iced vanilla lattes. I'm always an iced coffee kind of person, even with minus 15 degrees. I'll just be wearing mittens, or have my icicle fingers stuck on the iced coffee plastic than ever getting a warm drink. That first sip of heaven in the morning is unmatched. 
Going through these motions truly makes you feel like you're starting the day off strong and always boosts my mood and just makes me happy. Working a 9 to 5 can be so characteristically life altering and draining right when you're fresh out of university or college. Everything is so new and adulthood really does slap you straight in the face with its cold hearted reality. I leave the house earlier than 7am and come home literally at 7pm. By the time I would eat and settle down, it would be way too late to really do anything and then I'd have to at least try to go to sleep earlier because of the whole 5am waking up thing. Some days I wouldn't even see the light of day, literally. In the winter time, I leave in the mornings when it's dark and then leave the office when it's dark. So I would constantly joke about it at work that I was a vampire because literally I only saw the world when it was dark. It's hard to really live your life when you're a commuter because your work is basically your entire life. There really isn't enough time to do anything else. And I feel like that's something that no one really tells you about growing up. You look forward to finishing school so much to finally start your life. And then when you do, you find yourself lost in time, always tired, and not sure if any of it is really worth it. But I guess it's just what everyone goes through at the beginning. You're just so used to having a school routine and knowing your next step literally for like 20 years. And then when that drastically changes, it's a really hard adjustment. And it really was for me. But slowly and surely, it did get better. My job always also required a lot of evening events, which meant I sometimes would get home at like 10 or 11 p.m. But the taxi home was always paid for, and I always felt like I was Carrie Bradshaw or something. And downtown Toronto at night, amidst all the sparkling lights, is even prettier than the day. It's all about your mindset and the way you choose to look at it. The way you find little slices of time to squeeze in moments of solitude, or creative work, or friends, or family time, anything really. It's all about your resilience in the long game. Dreams are never made to be easy. But you take it day by day and gain strength and energy in the process and learn to juggle your life and prioritize only the important things. Working in a dreamy city helps. Oh, and good coffee. Coffee also helps.